<laughs> so welcome everybody. Today uh, we have a very special guest and we're going to talk about freestyle and I think Terry Gallo doesn't need any introduction. Probably not many people know her by person but I'm sure everybody knows what she has done in terms of freestyles. I had the pleasure of meeting her at a conference where I learned a lot about freestyles. I actually, I learned so much that the next year I went back to take the course again. So Terry, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Pleasure. So my, my first question, the first question I want to ask you is, how did you get involved in doing freestyles? And what is your background in music? And how did you start doing music for horses? How's, how's the story? How's the journey? Well, actually, I started off as a professional dancer and choreographer. Okay. And um, I was also a competitive athlete. I coached gymnastics for a long time, high level, international level. And I judged gymnastics as well, so at least I have a judge's perspective in there. And um, I was coaching at San Diego State at the time, and someone came and asked me if I would help her. She had been a writer and formerly a gymnast, and she said, how different could it be? So I said, okay, <laughs> what, what was I thinking, right? And um, I, uh, I helped her out. It was a lot of fun. It was local. And I said, oh, you know, I have a son who was just born and I didn't want to be in the gym anymore. I wanted to be home with my son. So it was something that I could do from home. And I started advertising locally. Well, who knew locally it was Stephen Peters and Gunter Seidel and, and Debbie McDonald. And <laughs> so it ended up a cascade of wonderful people and wonderful clients. And that's how I got sucked into dressage. And when I started, I just started doing the music for it. Um, I was responsible for the music and choreography and gymnastics. And you know what? Crossover is not that different. Um, you ask the same questions of your horse, or I, I ask it of the rider, as you would the dancer. What are your strengths? How do you see yourself? Because that's what you want to exhibit when you do the music. And Knowing nothing about dressage, I said, as long as you do the choreography, I'll help you with the music. And then little bit by little bit, I learned more and more. I think I took, for those of you in California, I don't know if you remember Mary's Tack and Feed, I think I took every video out of Mary's Tack and Feed that they had on dressage. And I just studied and studied and studied. And I, I kind of got, oh, I get it. Shoulder in, that makes sense. Haunches in, that makes sense. What the heck is a half pass? So, um, you know, little bit by little bit, you start learning the lingo and what the horse can do in the arena and how it progresses from low all the way through. So that's how I got it. Okay, and, and let me ask you another question. You've been involved in this for many years. 30. Okay. <laughs> Have you seen an evolution in terms of freestyles, in terms of choreography, of difficulty, and especially in terms of music, of the genre of music that people is using. Can you explain us a little bit about that? Yes. Um, if you want to go back into like the 1980s, Gabriella Grillo was very um, well known for her freestyles. And she would, on vinyl records, um, find music that she liked. And she would actually choreograph to the music, not the way we do it today. So it's a little bit different approach, uh, more classical music then than you find now. Um, things started to change. I remember Sven uh, Rothel, I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong because there's a, there's a quarterback with a name that sounds just like it, Rothelsberger. Rothelsberger. Rothelsberger, okay. And he, um, he did a Yanni piece and it was very, very exciting. It was very controversial, but it was very exciting. And so music started to change. And then in the 1990s, um, Anki uh, hired C. Slings and started the idea that you could take the music into the studio and have it written for you so that it's really everything that you want. But I think it was Debbie McDonald um, who really kind of kicked the door open and said that, you know, let's go have some fun. And she did the one for Brentina that was, you'll see later. Um, 
you see more and more rock music now than you did before. Um, degree of difficulty has completely changed. The, uh, before, what writers did, um, let me put it to you this way, especially for the FEI judges in the area, you may remember at a time when they were very, con the, the FEI was very concerned that this would become um, circus. Yes. I remember was, the discussions in the 80s. Right. If they saw what, what, the, what the writers do now, I wonder what they would think. <laughs> so, <laughs> the degree of difficulty has definitely gone up. And uh, interestingly. Yes, and I know we will talk about music afterwards, but this is just a question that I have in the top of my head that I want to ask you. When people is thinking about uh, music, do you think they can be a little less conservative now that they were in the past and they can take chances and risks with music? Yeah, I think so. Um, I would also like to put a caveat on that that says the higher up you are, the easier it is to break the rules. But for most of us mortals, we, we have to pretty much stay to the rules. And um, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit too. <laughs> okay, great. So I think we, we should start with the choreography and maybe we should start with the PowerPoint presentation. Do you agree? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Okay, so let me see if I can do it quickly here. I'm learning. I think we have it now. Can you see it? Yeah, let's go to the first slide though. I think that's the last one. Yes. Okay, so since you're going to see Debbie's freestyle later, um, I thought it would be kind of good to run through the, uh, let's stay on slide one, let's go back. Okay. Um, yeah, and so let's talk about, yeah, that, yeah. the very one was okay. just the, where it says understandable. Go back one more. No? Yeah, that's the one. Um, I think when people put together their choreography, they're very concerned with being creative. But if you look at the FEI score sheet, um, there's a word there called design cohesiveness. And to me, that's the most important aspect of doing the choreography. Can the judge understand what it is that you're doing? Because if the judge can't understand what you're doing out there, then the rest of everything else doesn't really much matter. So whatever you do, you have to make sure that your patterns are clear and understandable. Okay, let's go to number two. Before we go on, I really, I really have to say here that for us judges, and I think when you're, I think it's very important that what you just said, because for us, judge, for us judges, it's very important that we recognize what is going on. Otherwise, you know, there is a lot of confusion in the judges' booth. So I think that was a great advice for the in order to design a good choreography. The judge has to really get what you're doing. Yeah, there was, um, and, and not only that, but we'll, well, we'll get to difficulty next, but um, when the lines are more open, as opposed to crowded and confusing, uh, it's easier to see what's going on as well, so that there should be a flow of the choreography. Uh, and with that in mind, that you still have to make sure that you, you, you can see that I like to talk with my hands, sorry. <laughs> um, you have to use the uh, arena in its entirety, and that means from top to bottom and from side to side. You can't leave any area untouched. And um, my computer just got stupid on me. And um, you also have to make sure that each of the elements is distributed. So if you're a lower level rider, even a lower level rider, for instance, who's got trot circles, required to do trot circles and canter circles, if all of the circles are down there A, it's gonna feel like the arena is literally tipping towards the A side. So you have to make sure that all your elements are distributed throughout. And that said, the next thing is, do you use your right rein as much as your left rein, or at least close? Um, it's the, a seminar that Cesar was talking about, we were watching a bunch of freestyles and there was a rider who had done three pirouettes to the right and only one to the left. And that would not be considered directional balance. 
So you also have to make sure you use your rain work as well. And then um, creativity, as I said, don't get so crazy about am I being clever? Um, the thing to me that makes things creative is how you combine movements. So um, even at a lower level, let's say that's doing a circle and a leg yield. You can do the circle to the leg yield. You can do the leg yield to the circle. You can do the circle to the lengthening. You can do the lengthening to the circle. So you can have a whole bunch of people all at the same level doing things that look different simply by the way they combine their movements. And then did you start them on the rail? Did you start them on the quarter line? Did you start them on the center line? So there are a lot of ways that you can be clever. And that goes all the way up through um, Grand Prix. We can, if, you, if anybody has any questions on that or no, or Cesar, did you want to talk about that? I don't know, if, did, did I have difficulty? I'm listening well, uh, everybody's listening well. And for the time being, I don't have a uh, question. So I just want to remind everybody that if you want to ask a question, send us a chat, okay? Okay, let's go on to the next one. Okay, good. Oh no, maybe I have a question, sorry. I think we missed something. A little bit about combinations and what do you consider a combination? Well, you'll see a lot at the FEI level where people do something like an extension to a pirouette. That's a combination. Now, that being said, um, when you do a combination, regardless of the level, uh, one of the things that you have to do is connect them. You can't have a lot of strides in between or a lot of steps in between. They have to be pretty close together in order to get a credit for being combination. And that even goes all the way up, let's say it's a, a Grand Prix rider who does a trot half pass to a passage half pass. If it's trot half pass, da 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 passage half pass, that's not a connection. So um, even at the lower levels, let's say you do a leg yield. Let's say, you, I know in Canada, leg yield means the direction. So if I say leg yield right in the United States and Canada, it's leg yield left. So if you do leg yield in this direction, and you're on the left rein, and then you do a circle to the right, that's tough, because you're changing, you're changing your, your lines. But it'd have to be pretty, pretty, pretty much connected. I've had a lot of people asking me, like, especially when they, they are designing the Grand Prix freestyles with the new degree of difficulty, because they're counting and they want to make sure that they can get all possible points. So could you also explain about how to work with that floor plan a little bit and what your recommendations would be for that? Well, I don't care what the level is. You never do anything that's going to be, that is not going to show well in the arena. So if you want to um, maximize your degree of difficulty, you still have to make sure that you can execute it and pull it off because if you cannot, then you're going to lose on the movements themselves. You're going to lose for degree of difficulty because you took an unacceptable risk and you could possibly lose on harmony as well. So when you do your degree of difficulty, that's very nice. But I think regardless of the level, it's more important to see a clear, clean choreography than one that's so filled with difficulty that the horse is not going to perform well. Um, would, that would, being said, as, the, as my FEI riders, my Grand Prix riders go through those things, it also starts triggering a lot of um, ideas for them. So maybe an idea they hadn't thought about before. So it's worth it to go through it just to, for the, uh, the challenge and the thought process. Okay, good. So we go to the next one. Okay, so if you've got, I call them getting your ingredients. I seem to be, don't be missing a slide in here. Is that the first slide? Yeah. No, oh, I wonder what happened. Okay, maybe I, ah, oh, there we are. This one. Yeah, that's the one. That's um, very important. Yeah, California Dressage Society had a talk uh, last Friday night, and I was looking at the questions that were coming up, and I was surprised that 
there were a number of people who were asking questions that were clearly written in the rules. So I think it's important to spend the time and read the rules. Because first of all, you, you have to know what you must put in your freestyle. And that's of course all the compulsory elements. You have to know what you may put in your freestyle and that is anything that's at your level or below. And you have to know what's illegal. And in the US, there it's specific on each score sheet. It says it. But anything that is above your level cannot go in your freestyle, regardless of whether we're talking about your national tests or your FEIs. So um, an FEI junior, if they did, they would be permitted to do a leg yield zigzag and trot, a uh, leg yield, uh, a uh, uh, half pass zigzag and trot, but um, they would not be permitted to do tempies every four. So that would be illegal. And that's going to cost them dearly. It's very, very severe, severe Gary, deduction. Gary, I have a first question here. And it says choreography and degree of difficulty marks can be linked. Do you agree? Yeah, and, I do. And, and what is the similarity? And what would be the difference when judging this? Do you agree? that you could receive a nine for choreography and a six for degree of difficulty? Probably not. <laughs> and the reason I say they're linked is because when riders are looking at degree of difficulty and they do something that is difficult, you're not going to see it done very often because it's difficult. And so if it's difficult, it looks creative because you haven't seen it before and that's how they're related if it's something you haven't seen before because it's difficult it also can influence the score for creativity and that's how degree of difficulty and choreography are linked yeah from from a judge's point of view i would say that there is definitely a link between those two because if if your choreography isn't good then you cannot have a good degree of difficulty because then you could not perform what you were doing and the other way around is the same yes if you if you have a very poor degree of di difficulty then the choreography wasn't very exciting either right i would still rather see a clean test me too because ultimately your, your technical marks are gonna be higher, your harmony score is gonna be higher. Um, on the FEI, rhythm, energy, and elasticity, elasticity will probably be higher. So ultimately, yeah, I, I think that um, I'd still rather see a clean freestyle than one with difficulty the horse can't perform. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm sure you agree. Yes, I agree with that. And I, I'm sure that all the judges that are with us would say the same thing. For us, the most important thing is to see what I call like a flow of the whole presentation of the horse rider combination, you know, so that they, they look like they're enjoying and they're able to perform what they're supposed to perform. I, I think it was the London Olympics and they were doing interviews and they interviewed Gary and they said, what to you, tomorrow is the freestyle, what's the most important thing to you in the freestyle? And he said, harmony. Yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. Point of view was up there. Um, say so, you can probably address this. When a rider comes out there, what would be the kind of movement, if you saw it, you would think they were trying to hide something? Um, okay, there are, usually I would say that uh, horses with a bad walk, they try to hide the walk and they put the line of the walk in a place where only one judge can see it or two judges, but not the five or the seven judges can see it. So that's one thing that people try to hide. And uh, for instance, in the Piaf, if there is balancing in the Piaf, a lot of balancing in the Piaf, they show it from the short side to the, from the long side to the other long side so that the only two judges can see the balancing. Uh, well, and those are the ones that come to my mind. 
And actually, we have this, discussed this with Katrina and uh, talking about uh, the choreography. If you use that to your advantage, actually, that gives you points for choreography because, you know, you, you are taking advantage of the freestyle and a good choreography can try to hide your bad things and highlight your good things. Right. If you have very straight tempies, you might as well put them on the center line. Yes, and right after the halt, for instance, why not? <laughs> okay. Okay, do we go on? Yeah, sure. So if we, if we consider everything that you need to have for your choreography, which is that the pattern is clear and understandable, that all of your movements are distributed from top to bottom and from side to side, that you have an equal amount of right and left rain, and that you have some degree of creativity. I mean, that, that's pretty good choreography. And there was a time, speaking of how things have changed, there was a time when um, it was professed by a lot of people that your freestyle had to be symmetrical. So I put this slide up <laughs> to show you that you can have everything that you need and still have an asymmetrical design. So the only thing here that she repeats is the half pass to the left. So she starts off with a half pass to the left, but it's really a choreographic um, trick so that she can get everywhere else she needs to go. Now, had she only done that half pass to the left, which is, let's face it, it's the same as you've been doing since you were at a national level, that's not exactly Grand Prix. So she's got to come back and do that half pass to the left to prove that she is as balanced on the right as she is on the left. So, um, and then the rest, I mean, she's done everything that she absolutely needs to do and it's not symmetrical. So that's why that's there. Okay, that, uh, that's, a good, that's a very good explanation. Okay, now, now we come to the, to the focus of this presentation. You're, you're really wonderful with music. And I think the, our participants will have a lot of questions about music. And I think this is one of the things that has evolved the most, especially with technology. Uh, because technology has changed so much. I still remember when I had to do the first freestyles with our tape recorder, <laughs> and, you know. Uh, but nowadays there are studios, there are uh, programs that you can download from internet and of course professionals like you. So why don't you talk about a, what is a musical that is suitable for a horse? Well, How, let me give you a couple. Of, let me I'm sorry. I can give you a couple of ideas. Um, uh, Verdades, most people, because he's pretty current, so most people should know who Verdades is. If you stand it, next to him in the arena and he does an extended canter, your whole body shakes. <laughs> he is one powerful horse. And when you have that kind of power, then you can't give them dinky music. And that's what we talk about suitability. Now, Brantina, true story, this was in Jerez in 2002. Um, the person who went before Debbie was, um, got a huge ovation, huge ovation. So Debbie and Brantina come in and I asked Debbie and I said, didn't that disturb her? And she said, oh no, she thought it was for her. So when you know that about the horse, then you know you got one sassy lady there. And so that's when her next freestyle became very sassy. And that's another thing we talk about with suitability. Um, uh, this is um, uh, Stephen Peters and, um, oh gosh, I, his born name was Johnny. What was his real name? Oh gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Anyway, he was doing, um, I was watching him work and his knee on the passage came up so high. I said, oh my God, he's gonna hit his chin. And um, I said, he looks like an Irish step dancer. And that became the impetus for his music. So when you select music, you have to think about your horse. You have to choose something that's right for your horse. And if you're not sure what that is, look at your horse and say, 
what? How do I think about my horse? Is he sweet? Is he bold? Is he light? Is he a happy horse? And what you choose is a good uh, direction for your suitability. And then all the pieces that you put together have to match each other. You can't have a Latin canter and a, and a classical trot, that wouldn't work. And then, as you said, you can download lots of software from the internet. And that's fine, you can get the free stuff too, but you still have to make sure that when you put your music together that it flows and it doesn't have anything in there that sounds ugly or choppy. Um, and that's about it for the music. And then for yeah. interpreting. I, I would like to make a comment on this. Yeah. Sometimes you'll have writers that said, okay, but I don't know why I got about me. I got Mark for music. I got exactly the same music that Totilas was using. <laughs> and Totilas used to get nines and tens for music. And why my little Palomino is getting only a six. So I think the answer, we had it right there. Is it suitable or not? Maybe right. a wonderful music for one horse is not as wonderful for another. Exactly. Exactly. Precisely. That's a great example. Great example. Okay. So what, what, what would you say about same gender or instrumentation? Well, um, as I said, if you have Latin cantor and classical trot, it doesn't work. Everything has to be sound as if it belongs together. So um, there was a great, uh, I, I am, I'm forgetting his name, but he represented Brazil at the World Cup and he came out with Carlos Hobim. And I mean, there was absolutely no question where he was from and all the music sounded like exactly who he was and where he came from. It, you knew it belonged together. So that's what we mean by keeping the music uh, all from the same genre. Terry, we, we have a question now from Nicole, she's asking, do you have any issues with copyright when using music rather than creating your own music? You would have a copyright issue regardless, but I can't really answer that question because this is an international group and everybody's national laws would be different. So you really have to check with your national organization. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would like to comment a little bit about that. I talked to the FEI about this and you see, the problem for the big international competitions is that this music is going to be put on live stream on the FEI or in the USDF and things like that. So the reason why they're asking copyrights releases is because they don't want to be sued. And of course, we have to, to take care of copyrights and we have to respect the law. And at the same time, you have to see the law in the place. Like for instance, I remember we did it for the last Central American Games here in Colombia. The FEI was requesting that all the writers put forward the copyrights agreements, mm -hmm. but in accordance with the law, the, the Colombian law at that moment, what the organizing committee did was that pay the royalties to the local copyright organization and then we solve the problem. But, but that's a difficult issue. It's an important issue. And thanks for the question, Nicole. And uh, the US, the USEF um, pays rights to uh, ASCAP and BMI to, so that they can play show at, or they can play music at any show. It doesn't have to be the freestyle, any show, any music at a show is called broadcast and you must have a license for that. And USEF does cover that. For my international writers, it's a little bit different because they do stream and um, I do have to have copyright. I do secure that. Okay, so let's go to cuts and transitions. Right, it's, it just has to be smooth, you know, and you can, anybody who sat in the judge's seat for a while has heard them where they kind of go, da 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 because the cuts from one part to another are not smooth and it I don't mind that people do their own editing but <clears throat> um, they should have at least a little bit of a music background or at least a good ear if they're going to do that and if they're going to come across with something that's um, 
us old people will remember blackboards and the teacher making a mistake and hating the blackboard with their fingernails. It, that's what it does to me. It's like, Ugh. and um, it, it really needs to be smoother. And there, it's very easy to do. There's a feature called fade and you can just go from one section to the next and fade it, cross fade it. And usually that'll take care of the problem unless it's not going to take care of the problem, but usually it will. Yeah. But I, I, from what I see at horse shows, this is one of the issues that has improved a lot. Like yes. not very often do you hear bad cuts. So it's, it's going well. So let's go to, to, to this matching of footfalls of trot and canter. Mm -hmm. And my first question would be, why didn't you add there the walk? Um, <clears throat> Because a trot or canter, you're there for a very, very long period of time. And it's important for that length of time to show the judge that you, uh, there is a correlation between the music and the movement. Now, I didn't put the walk up there because, first of all, if you're trotting at the lower levels for two minutes, a Grand Prix, you're only trotting for a minute, sometimes less than a minute. But your walk can be 40 seconds. And that's the least amount of time you're spending on anything. For the lower levels, you could be two minutes of trot, two minutes of canter, and 30 seconds at the walk. So um, what's more important for me at the walk is that the music gives you the feeling that it's relaxed. Good. So that the, if the walk is relaxed, the music should be more relaxed. If it's a brilliant walk, should the music be match? Yeah, I'd say so. If it's a really good walk, you want to point it out. But if it's not such a great walk, just, just do something nice and easy, as long as it fits with all the other pieces in there. Okay, and, and how, how do you make sure that the footfalls match the trot and the country? Well, we have some video on that that we'll play in a minute. Okay, so I'll, I'll go to the videos now. Let me see. Okay. We so had a, just so everybody knows, we tried this yesterday and we had a really hard time um, having the metronome be heard. But I just want you I want you to see it. Let me go back. We go to the counter. Yeah, that's my phone. And on my phone, I have a metronome. I know it's a little bright in here, it's kind of hard to see, but I have a metronome. Uh, there you go. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. And that's how you find the tempo. Now, you're going to see Debbie again, because at the end, we're going to see her whole freestyle. And this was her working out and my finding out her tempos of the trot. So uh, go ahead. Anytime you're ready, we can play it. Not, I'm not seeing it. People seeing it? Are you seeing it? No. Okay, so let, let me go back. There we go. So I go back. That's, that's fine. We don't want to make it too big. It's kind of blurry. It's a very old video. Can you see it now? That's her canter, so let me go to the canter. I'm sorry that the video was stuttering a little bit, but um, you can kind of see that the metronome and the gate is in sync. So you use your metronome to find it out. And you would do the same thing for trot. Okay, good. So. Oh, we can get rid of the slide. Oh, well, there's one more music and choreography related. 
but we can get into that separate. We can close that window. Okay. So now let me look. The trot. While he's looking that up, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little feature called tap. And when you touch that, every time the footfall hits, it'll bring up the tempo for you. Terry, I'm, I'm sorry to ask you this, but is it easy to download that application for your iPhone? Oh, yeah. How do you get it? Can you, can you, can you explain a little bit? Probably yeah, people you go to the app store, you look up metronomes and there are a ton of them. Okay, good, great. Okay, so do we see the trot work now? Sure. I think I have the right tempo. Uh, you might need to center it in the screen a little bit. It's off to the side. It's hard to see. Yeah, there we go. That's it. So that's exactly how you find it. You just use your metronome to, to do it. Okay. Do, do you see that, that the, like between the time that you do a freestyle and the time of the competition at times, do this change? <laughs> how do you fix that? Well, on those international riders, no, not so much. But um, for the lower level riders, yeah. And the intermediate, I think, is the way we see the biggest change because um, I had one rider start the season and then the horse was really progressing well and started doing passage work. And as soon as that horse started lifting up and collecting and spending time in the air, it translated through to the trot too. And the trot dropped six beats per minute, which is huge that's huge so i see the biggest changes at intermediate but to answer your question and it happened just recently um at our national championships last year the writer wrote to me and she said music isn't working anymore i said send me a video <laughs> and it's just a matter of changing the tempo and it's usually very easy to do okay do you want me to go back to our powerpoint no we're done okay Okay, good. So, um, what else would you recommend about music? You have to like it. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> because you're going to listen to it a lot. <laughs> that's very important. So, then I have a question now. Sometimes we writers have preferences mm -hmm. about, like, for instance, our national music or, you know, our state music in big countries like the US, like I'm from Texas, so I want to write something that is from Texas, or I'm from Mexico, and I want to write with the mariachi band. <laughs> and, uh, in that sense, is it always possible to go to that, or you have to take into consideration the level, the horse, the rider, and what, what would your approach for that be? Step one, is the music suitable for the horse? I don't, if ethnic music is fine or, or nationalistic music is fine as long as it's right for the horse. As I said, we used Celtic music for Stefan's horse. So um, yeah, I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, and as I said, the Brazilian used Carlos Hobim and I mean, it's, it's just internationally known. The thing that you do have to worry about is if it's obscure music and nobody's going to know it except for you. Um, and an aside, there's a true story. Lois tells it. It's very funny. There are a whole bunch of different pieces of music in this one freestyle, and she didn't think it really belonged. And the writer said, but it's all the same theme. It's after the name of my horse. 
Well, I mean, you know, you're pretty busy there in the judges booth. Are you really going to be able to know it's about the name of the horse? So <laughs> you have to be careful about what you choose. And uh, if you're not sure, ask around. Okay. Ask around. And if somebody would ask you, would you use some music that the audience would like? Or that you're sure that the audience would love? Or would you rather choose a music that the judges would love? How, how, how do you solve that question? Hmm. Well, that kind of comes on the heels of something we were talking about yesterday. Um, there's a saying, you, you can't please, you can please all of the people some of the time, some of the people all of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. Yes. It's the same way in music. It's just the way it is. And I think, I mean, I, and I, this is going back quite a long time ago. I had a writer who had gone through a very, very hard time. And she wanted to use religious music. And um, I mean, it was rock music. It was more like positive music. And um, I said to her, well, I, I don't know how this will be received. It was quite a while ago. And she said, I don't care. It's for me. I got through this. I want to do this. And I said, then that's what you do. But she wasn't going for national championship either. <laughs> I think it depends upon where you are. Okay. I, I have a question here. Do you prefer original music or use melodies from songs? Personally? Yes. I think when it's well, well, I'm always going to go back to suitability. If it's right for the horse, it's the right music. Um, let's take Adrian's new music. Adrian opens, uh, Adrian uh, Lyle. She has a piece of music that will absolutely give you the chills, but I don't know that anybody really knows it. They know her walk, not, they, not, they know her canter, they know her trot, but they don't know her final passage, but her final passage will still give you goosebumps. And, so it, it's a, I, I don't think there's a real answer to that. Okay, and then I have another question. So I've seen lately that there is a very clear difference between trot music and passage music and even accentuations for the PF. And then we've also, we have also been seeing like little bells or different accentuations for counter pirouettes or even slowing down the tempo of the counter music for the pirouettes. What would you say about all this? Well, usually the bells are a cue for the rider so they know where they are in the music and that it's time for them to prepare for the next movement. That's what I hear. But the, what you're talking about, for instance, on the pirouettes, I, I don't mind a lot of things that happen with the pirouettes except Personally, and this is a personal preference, I, I'm saying it's a personal preference, slow, having all the music going along at the same tempo or then slowing the same music down just for the pirouette and then picking the tempo back up, to me sounds stupid, but that's me. Um, and, and there are writers who want to do that, that's fine because are they matching the footfalls to the pirouette? Well, yeah, they are, but um, as far as I'm concerned, the judges, no, uh, well, no, I'm going to take that back because there was a time where it was insisted that the tempo of the pirouette did not change. It should be the same as all the other gates. But when a lot of the people like Hillary Clayton and all started doing all this research, they discovered, no, that the pirouette is going to be slower than the rest of the gate if you do it correctly. So um, the fact that we all know this doesn't mean that you need to slow the music down. We know it's going to happen. So, so why sound stupid on top of everything? I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. As I said, it's just a personal preference. Okay. I, I have another question from our friend from England. He's asking, we now have computer-generated degree of difficulty marks. Where would you like to see freestyles developed in the future? That's a really, really, really good question. And I'll tell you why, because my background is from gymnastics. We went through an enormous change in our rules in 1980. 
And that's when we started to put in um, um, what you see now in the FEI. Um, and, and it keeps getting more and more refined and more and more refined and more and more refined. Until I stopped watching gymnastics because it got boring to me because everybody was doing the same thing to try to maximize their degree of difficulty. Then along comes Simone, um, oh my God, my brain, I'm telling you, brain dead today. Simone, uh, okay, she just blew everybody out of the water just blew everybody out of the world because her difficulty and her energy that she brought to the performance was so great. And then people started to realize, you know, if it's going to be difficult and I have to go for all this difficult difficulty, can I also put some personality in it too? So things are starting to change a little bit now, but when I'm telling you there for a while, I wouldn't even watch the Olympic gymnastics coverage. And, and I had people in the Olympics. <laughs> it previously and i wouldn't even watch it so it was boring and i think what's happening with the fei right now do i like the idea that we have it yes i like the idea that we have it because it's objective what writers need to um be careful for is that theirs doesn't look like everybody else's so I did a slide. Um, I, can I share my computer? No, can I share my desktop? unfortunately not. No, I can't. Okay. All right. Because I had one, one thing that I showed how um, you could do passage half pass to a pee off and go straight. You could do passage yes. half pass to a pee off pirouette. Do you want to? Do you want to show something? Let me see if I can find it first. Okay. Um, well, you. So I will make you our host. Well, wait for just one second. Let me see if I can find it first. Okay. In the meantime, I have a question. Yeah. You can do two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's uh, uh, from Spain. It says once a judge told us that he was worried that sometimes writers did not really distinguish between a music that is really tailored from one that is just background music, no matter how many changes in songs. He strongly believed that some courses should be offered especially to the generations coming up to understand this. What, what are your thoughts about this? Well, on that, that last slide that I had you um, take away, that um, we talk about that, that the music has to relate to the movement. And um, let's see if I can find a slide first. Uh, da -da 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 -da. This is, a, this is, yep. a, um, and, um, and, and you do, it's called phrasing, so that when you hear the um, music change, you have to change your movement. And it has to be more than just that. I found the slide. So how would I do this? So I'm going, there is a button at the bottom of the screen that says share screen. But first I'm going to make you a host. So now you can do it. You're the host now. So you says share screen and then it will come out. Desktop. Whatever you have in your screen will come up. Allows the green share button. Screen. Allows That's the share screen in the center at the bottom. You want to send it to me by email and I post it? Yeah, maybe that's better. Okay. Yeah, maybe that's better. Yeah, that might be a better idea. Actually, this is the slide that you and I had a discussion on, on recognizing what uh, the steepness of the half pass was. Okay. So this is great. <laughs> so I have another question, kind of technical question from a Colombian designer of freestyles, Carlos Agüera. Uh -huh. He says, do you think judges can get confused 
with three quarters music or six eighths or swing? Swing never, because swing is a dance form and um, that uh, that's a dance form. Whenever you have a dance form, it makes your horse look as if it's dancing. So no, I don't have a problems with swing. Three, four can be difficult depending upon the horse. Um, if the horse is not, Usually not at the upper levels, usually at the lower levels. But if you were so doing a posting trot, you would be- For us mortals, could you explain three, fours, and six, eights? Oh, sure. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if it's a trot at one, two, three, one, two, three, and you were rising, it would be rise, two, three, sit, two, three, rise, two, three, sit, two, three, rise, two, three, sit, two. Okay. So it would be a little bit weird. But um, let me see if I can send this away to you. Uh, mail. I'm going to send it to you via mail. Yes, please. And it's on its way. Okay, um, now as far as six eight goes, no, not so much, because often it depends on the six eight. Very often, six eight is felt like one two one two one two three two five six one two three four five six one two three four five six, and it depends on the tempo. So it could be one two one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five six, and could very well be a passage at that tempo. So it depends on the tempo of the music, and it depends on the gait. So does that answer your question? I'm sorry that's kind of over everybody's head, but... Well, um, we'll ask Carlos to, to write us back to see if that answers the questions. Then I have, yes, he says yes, that answers. Okay. <laughs> so the, we have another question. You were talking about phrasing. Can you yeah. pick up that again? This is from Caroline Malmo. Sure. Um, Okay, I'm trying to think of a good song. There's, it's a commercial, so probably a lot of people are uh, familiar with it. Um, blow kiss into the sun, all we need is someone to lean on. Blow kiss into the sun. You don't want to listen to me sing. But anyway, <laughs> it was a canter, and it would be half pass. Let's say it's going to be a half pass with a change of hand. So you're going to the right. Blow kiss into the sun. All we need is someone to lean on left. Blow kiss into the sun. All we need is someone to lean on. That's what we mean by phrasing and moving with the music. And it just so happens that from D to B is about eight strides. Isn't that lucky? So it's <laughs> about eight beats of music and eight strides. It works out very nicely. So yeah. Okay. Does, does that answer your question? I'm waiting to see the answer. And now, yes, Caroline okay. says yes. <laughs> um, then I have another question. Would it not be nice to hear some of the highlights of a competitor's music as he she leaves the ring and judges are finishing putting their last marks? That's over my pay grade. <laughs> that's up to show management that's well i have to say i had to do it with with the breast cancer F foundation because i had to give a comment last winter in florida but i think that that's a really good idea that's a really good idea there was a question from a spanish uh father oh well speaking of spain and speaking of somebody before mentioned lusitanos um, it's very interesting because um, you'll very free. Oh, uh, Fuego. Fuego. I mean, how could you, uh, how could you deny Fuego? I mean, Fuego and that music is like, wow. And um, it's very Spanish. So we were talking about representing your, your country. And wow, that was just one of the most outstanding freestyles I think I have ever seen. It absolutely raised, I'm sitting here in goosebumps. Yeah, <laughs> it raised my hair on end. Yeah. Okay, can, can you see the screen now? Yeah, I think we need to make it bigger. 
That's difficult for me. Can you push that little green um, button up in the far left-hand corner of the... Okay. No, that didn't do it. Okay, let go. Let's, let's get out of there. Sorry. That's okay. No. Let's, let's get out of there. I have another idea. There's a Zoom button. Maybe let's try Zoom. Okay. There cool. we go. Thanks. All right. So we were talking about creativity and using degree of difficulty. So if you look at what's on the far left, which is the half pass to the shoulder in right, if that's a lower level, pre, a lower level like, a, like a, 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 even an FEI junior, as soon as you start getting into the counter band, that's tough for those lower level riders. So that's fine, but if that were an intermediate, no, not so very much. Now, the DB half pass is the same whether you're at third level, fourth level, junior, uh, intermediate, young rider, it's DB. So once you can exceed that steepness, you are looking at degree of difficulty. So if, if you look at the second um, one, then you can see that it's a little bit more difficult especially for like a junior rider, but not, maybe not for, an, for a, an intermediate, who knows. Now we take that exact same pattern and we move it over into a different location. So you've got the half pass, a little bit steeper than it would be normally expected. So the counter bend shoulder and right on the quarter line. Now, once you get to, young writer where it's in the test no is that in the test well it's intermediate it's definitely in the test or here in the u.s level four um once that shoulder in is asked to be on center line in the test then it's no longer considered degree of difficulty because it now becomes an expectation for the level yeah. so so that shoulder in right there in the middle slide wouldn't get you much in the terms of degree of difficulty if you were an upper level rider, but you could still get some difficulty for the half pass. Now let's look at slide four. You've got that real steep half pass. It's the Grand Prix half pass. You have an intermediate rider who can do that. That's hot stuff. And then the shoulder in is on the, on the rail. So she gets points, more points, for that in terms of degree of difficulty than the half pass to the shoulder in on the photo line. Now let's go to that last slide. This is the one, Cesar, that we were talking about yeah. uh, at the seminar. I said, well, you see that half pass is a Grand Prix half pass. And she does the shoulder in on the center line. And then she does, comes out with another steep half pass. And Cesar said, you think I have the time to figure that out? <laughs> So, no, because it's not obvious and the judge is very busy. So whatever it is that you need to do, you need it very clear. So Make my writer would be much better off if she were going for degree of difficulty to do number four. However, if she were going for creativity, then the last one is much more creative because we don't get to see that because it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, and on the other, the other way around, sometimes if you see the first half pass left in a Grand Prix, definitely that's not enough because you don't even have the steepness required for the Grand Prix, right? Oh, are you talking about if you're a Grand Prix rider? Yes, if you're a Grand Prix and you show that kind of a half pass. I've seen it, believe me. So, uh, so that doesn't give you any credit. That's right. You have to always perform at your level. That's what degree of difficulty is. You have to perform at the top test of your level. And, and that's one of the cases where you could go a little down on choreography and a little down on degree of difficulty as well. And there is a correlation there because you're not, you're not even getting to the expectations of the steepness of the half passes, especially if you do that in trot and, and, and canter. So, uh, you're not even performing at the required level for the Grand Prix. That would be correct for the Grand Prix. Um, for the, for an intermediate. Oh, that's different. Yeah, that would be different. Yeah. Okay, we have a question from Susan. 
She says, between the last two examples, number four has a change to shoulder in right, while the last one maintains the vein to the left in half passes and shoulder in. Does that reduce point? I don't think so. What do you think? Uh, the last two examples, let me see it again, is half pass less to shoulder in right. Uh, well, I think uh, the combination here, it would be a combination for me. And this is the kind of thing that you would like to, think, to see in St. George or Young Riders, because the change of bend is kind of the difficulty that you expect for the trot work in those levels. Of course, the fourth one, if you clearly recognize that the steepness is the required, half pass left, uh, then shouldering left and half pass left is not, is not as difficult, but then from a technical point of view, I don't think it would be, it wouldn't have the flow to do with half pass left to shoulder in right then to turn the horse all over around. That would be a little too much circus for my opinion. Uh, we, we talked a little bit, uh, Cesar and I were talking, chatting a little bit yesterday, and one of the things we talked about was flow. If she continues that left, 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 it's more fluid, absolutely. Yes, I think that's, that's very, very important to take into consideration when you're designing. It has to look easy and happy for the rider, happy for the horse. I think that's very important. Okay, so should we go to our last video? Sure. Okay, so let me close this one. And then now we go. While he's figuring it out, I can tell you the stories about this freestyle. Um, the Debbie said, you know, I want to do this song first. If we, well, this goes all the way back to 2002. I was uh, thinking about Jerez, you know, that sassy mare. And I started thinking about music right away. And the, I was, <laughs> where do you get your inspiration from music? Well, I was watching Muppets from Space. Okay, Muppets from Space. And I hear this rhythm. And all of a sudden, the doors swing open and out walks Miss Piggy. She's a brick house. And I said, that's Brentina. And that's how I knew I wanted to use that song for Brentina from 2002. We never got a chance to use it till 2005. So 2005 rolls around and Debbie said, I want to have some fun. And I want that last line to have the voice for respect. So my husband can tell you how many nights I went to bed staring at the ceiling going, this time, Terry, you've gone too far. <laughs> so, but it was worked. It worked. It really was. It really worked. And it was a lot of fun. Okay. So here we go. For the United States now, here is Debbie McDonald and Brentina. This is the one. We've all been waiting for it. She's got a brand new performance set to the music of Motown. Hard to hear. This is the choreography that you saw before in print. That was a lovely change of music for the period. Yes. 
and watch how she waits for the music. Yeah. Okay, so the chat's coming up on the screen. That is just amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's, yeah. <laughs> 
And, and when we were talking about before, when I was showing you the half pass right, half pass left, you can see that every time there's a change of music, there's a change, a corresponding change of movement. And let me tell you, that's not so easy to do um, because every show is a little bit different. So it, it's, it's a credit to the rider who can go into the arena and make that work. And especially in an area like that, where, which was very electric and everybody was like right there on top of you. Um, the other thing that I wanted to point out was you were saying, do you always have to match the beat of the music to the footfalls when you were asking about the pirouette? Yep. You can see that freestyle on YouTube, so you can look it up if you want to watch it again. But at the end, she goes from passage to a trot extension back into passage. I did not change the tempo of the music. But there was something in the music that said, this is a trot extension. So it doesn't have to be absolutely married to the beat for every single footfall. But there does have to be something in the music that suggests what the movement is. I, I have to tell you something. I, I admire people with passion. And I admire people that take risks. Of, and of course, Debbie is great and she did a wonderful job. But you were the person behind the creation of this. And, and I think that was quite revolutionary for the time. So I, I really admire you for that. And I think everybody that has watched this video, uh, many people almost go to tears when, when we see that. And I really want to congratulate you for that. And the other thing that is amazing for me is Debbie's face, her smile. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, yes, this was very, very special. Thank you very much. Yeah, she was saying on the brick house part, when everybody started, you couldn't really hear it there, but when everybody started to laugh, she said it just made her feel so good. And, um, and, it, and it showed in the performance. And I, and I think it does. I think, remember I said you have to be happy with your music? And I think when you are, it does show. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, Thank you very much. Uh, I've had a lot of chats congratulating you on, you know, saying wonderful things about the performance. Uh, I have one final question. And this question is, do you give the writer cues in the music so they know where they are? No. I let the music speak for itself. It's the way it's edited. I mean, that particular one was done in the studio, but like Laura Graves was edited from music that existed from master, it's called Master Copy. And um, it's the way that you edit the music um, to do that. Now, before I knew anything about dressage, I was an editor. So, um, you know, I brought that skill to what I do here. And I, and I think that's a distinguishing factor. Um, when I was doing it, I was a lone wolf. But um, I have to say that there are a lot, of, a lot of good designers out there now, and they do a super job um, it, making that work and having that fluidity and, and having that expression. And Yeah, and, and I'm glad to see it because I'm going to retire one day. <laughs> and somebody's got to take my place. <laughs> you hope not soon. You do wonderful things and you create wonderful pieces of art for horses and riders that we all enjoy uh, watching so much. So we're, we're getting close to the end. If anybody else wants to add a comment or want to have the microphone to make a questions now, we, this is the time that we can do it. I can, I'm going to turn microphones on to see if you want to say something to Terry. Oh, Marilyn, is she still with us? Marilyn? Marilyn, yes. are you with us? Do you remember? I think you counted the number of phrase changes that Debbie did. Do you happen to remember? Is that again, Terry? When you were at the clinic, with the seminar, you count, I remember specifically you counted yes. the phrases. Do you remember how many you counted? No. Over 20. A lot. Yeah, it was over 20. A lot. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Which is really great. <laughs> okay, if anybody wants to have questions for Perry, you're welcome. Venga, yo les hago una pregunta. 
Question. Who is this? Can can you do it in English, please? Hello. Hello. Carlos. Okay, so I have an I have muted everybody. Uh, so if somebody wants to ask a question, uh, you can do it, uh, and you can ask me. So I will unmute you. For the moment, this will be the end of our recording. Thank you very much, Terry, for your wonderful comments. Thank you very much for your patience and for sharing all your knowledge with us. I hope we can have you here again. Probably talk about uh, uh, choreography or some other specific things. For joining in. Okay, so I'm going to 